Hello, we're live from uh, Glastonbury. Yeah, we're at Glastonbury and we're live. Live from Glastonbury. In a field. In the court of the Winter King. Yeah. 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 Uh, before we do anything else, we've had a parcel. Darren Locke gets loads of free stuff, so why don't we? <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Did you just mention Darren Locke? I did, for the first time. Yeah, we did lots of videos though. He does lots of videos, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, we've had, we've had a present. He's from Daniel Moore. Thank you very much, Daniel Moore. We appreciate this. This is a pretty nice stuff. Uh, stuff. Yeah, we don't often get stuff, do we? We don't ever get stuff. <laughs> this is our first stuff. I'm sure someone said, "Can we send? Can I send you an album to review?" Did they? Did you reply? I can't remember. Perhaps we didn't. <laughs> Never mind. It might have been from Mongolia, though. Oh, right. There we go. There we go. It's. It's the 2017 tour box. Yes, yes. And it's something, I don't know what that is yet. It's Kamara. Sounds good. Oh, this is one of the things he's um, on the list. I've got my slot in. Well, the first track's called Dirty Smelly, so I think that's going to be a good thing. Oh, my Raticus, which I never got for some reason. Get one means to buy. I'm just, this is a special tour edition as well. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much. That's brilliant. We'll yeah. get around to reviewing that stuff at some point. So. Maybe we should say that. If you send us send us random stuff, it doesn't have to be music albums and we'll review it. Yeah, anything you send us <laughs> that's not poisonous or explosive. <laughs> um, we will review it. Yeah, do it. Within the confines of the law. <laughs> so, yeah. We're actually supposed to be reviewing Henry Cow. That is Henry Cow. It's the same cover again. Unrest, one year later. A paradox. It's the same style. It's the same band, same style. Far and away cohesive and, and, and just fantastic compared to this one fo focused random blah that we had last week. Tight arrangements, there's the subtlety, there's this variation in textures and frightening bits and different bits. There's more of a pulse actually as well, interestingly, which might explain why it's not tight actually, because I mean the previous album needed, needed a uh, conductor. Maybe it's the bass or something, I don't know. You know maybe Ligand was more King Crimson actually, and this is more Zappa. Their composition, I mean, I'll compare it to Zappa, it's, it's, and it's that good. You know, it's, I think it's fantastic stuff. I don't think that's a thing. For me, there's this huge leap between the two albums. I don't think that's the accepted wisdom. I don't think, I don't think anybody else thinks that. But to me, this is just, oh. So it's the same style, but it's a mixture of styles and textures. 20th century classical, Zappa bits, piano bits, almost ELP bits. There's bits that make me think of Kate Bush, strangely. And there's one track that actually sounds like B-Fly, I think. Thankfully, just, thankfully just the one. So yeah. We said an awful lot about Henry Cow last week, and um, I don't think this undoes all of it, but it, I mean, it definitely sounds more like an album actually worth listening to. So you so you agree it's, it's a leap? It's, it doesn't sound so, so meh, because, you know, I kept comparing it to Heresy, didn't I? Mm. Um, maybe the, the maybe the scary bits on here make it feel yeah okay that's that's kind of cool because uh, I feel with the, this kind of avant-garde stuff you can only really do scary you can't do avant-garde bubbly happy happy something can you? <laughs> yeah so the fact that there's the, the, there's a more uh, sinister tone to it I don't know if that's on purpose uh, or that's just me the bits I pick out I sense that they're saying it's because of the, the turmoil in the band. Yeah. <laughs> Things were so hard. Well, it's a bit more. Um, it's less scripted and more improvisational, isn't it? Yeah. The second side is, is free stuff. And that's that. That works really well. There is some weird stuff on there. There's like the what is it? Um, what's the first track? Uh, I think the old musical and I've Yeah. Which is a, a remake of Yardbird song or something like that. With yeah, bit, bit in the storm overall. Yeah. It's uh, got to hurry by the Yardbirds. I don't remember. Basically, you took that, those <laughs> songs, and then just changed the number of bars here. And then I mean, there's something about that, isn't it? Let's take a song that anyone can now hardly ever remember, and, and let's it. screw with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's almost like sort of algorithmic composition, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the process of taking something there and well, I'll just get bro. Yeah, I haven't got an issue with that. I mean, that can be that can be quite cool. My issue is with, with taking a, a, such an obscure song and doing it. Mm. You know, why not take something not so obscure and do it? You know. Oh yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it's better. It's definitely better in terms of avant-gardeness. It's just the right amount of um, weirdness and sinister in there to make it actually worth persevering with. Mm -hmm. 
which I struggled with last year. I'm going to be honest, I really struggled with that last year. I still don't think it's as good as the nursery wound. You bought a nursery wound all last week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a very extreme case. Not just that yeah. the music itself is extreme, but nursery wound in its sort of amazingness. Yeah, I suppose what I'm doing there is laying down a marker. Yeah. Saying, you know, I'm not actually against avant garde music. There's yeah. avant garde music I listen to. I used to listen to Nursery Wound on my earphones at work. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Someone comes to talk to you and you've got... <laughs> That's an no interesting background. experience, I tell you. And Steve is saying, right, yeah, so these, these three things that we're doing, blah, 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 and then his head starts to float away, and then the background melts. etc. Scratch. Yeah, so it's not really not long after Leg End, but it is the difficult second album. Although well, actually they've been around since, like, 69. It is their second album, and it was... And it was difficult, and they sort of passed it with fine colours, didn't they? They passed the test. This is, for me, so much better than the first album. So much better. They had a load of music for a... Well, I mean, it sounds quite harmless in that it was just a play about The Tempest, based on The Tempest. They made some music for it. Apparently it's a completely mental version of this play that's based on The Tempest. So there's bits of The Tempest in it, and it's mental. And they had some music for that, so they were going to use that, but there wasn't enough for an album. I think someone once said there was only... One song on it actually ended up from that. But yeah, so that's why some of it is improvised because they just didn't have enough. So the, there's improvised stuff that slowed down and speeded up and edited and chopped. But there's no, like, you know, on Leg End where it just stops for no reason <laughs> and something else comes on. Yeah, it's, it fits together, it's, it's great. I do prefer the written stuff, I think, particularly track two. I think it's fantastic. Um, there's two lengthy pieces on side one, which I really like. I mean, it's probably because it's avant garde. It's such a hard thing to pin down. It is just random noises. However much you, you know, dress it up, it is just random noises. Do you like the random noises? Yes, I love the random noises. You know, and that's it, really. So the fact that I like this one and other people like the other one, and the accepted wisdom is that they are both good albums. Now the shift in textures, they have actually got a new player who plays oboe and bassoon, and that replaces all saxophone stuff. And I think that's probably a lot to do with it. There's not a lot of gonging. That's what we ended up calling it. Yeah. I started calling it shop machine, but you're right, gonging is more accurate. There's not much of that on there. Maybe upon entering the hotel, that's the one I think sounds like B flat, apart from that one. There's some fantastic Lark's Tongs type violin on there. There's actual xylophone. There's not just there's marimba on there, but there's also xylophone as well, you know. Lots of instruments, and that's possible. Maybe the first time they couldn't afford lots of instruments. That's part of the, the thing. Uh, but it's also so much tighter, which has got to help. Oh yeah, half asleep, half away. That's track two. That that is fantastic. It's the fact that the tracks they they build into randomness. It's not just all randomness. You know, you've got something happening in the, and da, 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 and then it's usually towards the end of the track that they just start going completely crazy. And then it, then it's amazing. That it, yeah, just forty minutes of of, of blah, 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 and the guitar is going bing bar ruins. That's the track three as well. That's like a twelve minute thing, I think. That's built from Fibonacci numbers, which is actually an idea from Bartok, actually, so it's not as odd as it sounds. But I, I like the bit, it sounds like they're plugging the mic in and out. Maybe, I think maybe one of the wind instruments. And uh, it's a little bit like in Chunga's Revenge, when he was he plugged the, the sax friends in the martial arts. That's the kind of sound, but he's just going... Like that. And it, except, and whereas, usually that kind of thing would be funny and just rubbish. And I think if it was on the previous album, it would have been just, well, that's just ridiculous. It's really good. I really like it. He's, he's doing it, he's going, burr, burr. <laughs> it's great. It's, it, it's, it straddles silly and scary, I think. Is it? That's that's the key to having God, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Ling, linguiophony? Linguiophony? I don't know how to pronounce that right. If he's on the second side. Linguiophony, which is track five, you think, well, this is, that's as far as it's going to go. That's, it's, it's the most out there. But until, until you get to arcade, that's much the same. There's, there's there's extra tracks though which aren't on the album. I don't know if you had the album. Have you got the glove? No, no. You've, oh, you've only I had, had what, what you gave me. Of course, yeah, yeah. So there, there are more tracks which which are on different versions of it. So our last track on the proper album, this is the re, the remaster remix, which goes back to the original mix actually. That's why it's, I think that's why it's got the picture inside. Which sadly, ruins the cover, I think. But it, the only reason you can tell it's the proper version. But you're missing this thing called the glove, which is. People shouting and going, ah! You have still got the thing with the guitar that I moaned about last week, where the band are playing and the guitarist is just on top. It's only really the opening track, though, I think. I, I wonder if 
Does he even know what the rest of the band are playing? It almost wouldn't matter. Yeah. It just didn't do anything. Yeah. He's very fripp though. Very fripp. And there's a lot of chords, the sort of chung chords. Very, very fripp. He even has a similar name, um, Fred Frith. I, I, I think. I mean, I said last week I know, I know the names of these people, that I'd heard these names before I'd even heard King Crimson. I'd heard of Robert Fripp and Fred Frith as guitarists who were weird and oh my god, what's that going to be like? It wasn't before the days of internet, but it was before the days of, of audio files on the internet. And I had to order things from obscure, faraway places to get albums. So, you know, that's probably how I got leg in next. I probably had to order it from somewhere. I, you know, maybe their fortunes would have been different if this had been their first album, for me. Uh, I mean, they didn't make Leg End until 73, maybe, but I don't know. Some, something, maybe they, or maybe they had to make Leg End in order to, do, in order to be here, but th- this, is, this is fantastic music. It's, it's not like, you know, I mean, Universe Zero. The first album is fantastic music. The second album is the most amazing music you've ever heard anyway. But, but, but the first album for me doesn't actually work. The bits of it are live, but it doesn't actually work. Whereas this, this is perfect. It's one of those perfect albums. Uh, the cover sock, the earlier is because the same cover. They did three albums with the same cover, and I think there's a live album with the same cover. The, the sock, colour of the sock changes depending on the mood of the album. So I suppose that's right. In the, yeah, because it's dark. And a dark sock. A dark sock. So yeah. Uh, anything else to say about it? Not I'm really. Just... I mean, it is, uh, for me, I, you, you, you obviously you really think this is a major step change. Mm-hmm. I think this is a progression. And they've progressed to an album that's actually worth a listen. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's any more than that for me. Right, yeah. It's a sort of... It's like, a step up, but it's not, it's, not a, it's a step up. Yeah. Uh, there are no highlights that I can pull from this. Mm. Which is... Um, which I, I think that kind of means we're in completely different, you know, yeah. time zones on this. I, I've listened to this a lot, though. Just this week. I've listened to it a lot. I don't know how many times. Many, many times. But yeah, sometimes an album just gets you like that. It, 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 yeah. Obviously, it didn't, it didn't get me. There was no point where I thought, oh, I'll listen to that. And... That little yearning in my brain to, to put it on again, it, yeah. it just wasn't there, mm. which is strange. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a five acre, and it's a high five acre for me. I, somewhere along the lines, I was wondering, is this going to end up being a six acre? It's not six acre, it's not. So Heresy was six eggs. This is a five acre, but it's a high five for me. Four. Four eggs. Four eggs. Four eggs. Um, yeah, a lot to appreciate. Again, uh, you can't. It's, very difficult to just not say what we said last week, but a lot to appreciate, but not really, n- not not an inspirational thing for me. Mm-hmm. There we go. Right. And we'll catch you next week for another album with a sock on it. It's not got a sock on the, the next one. It's, it's, um, it's um, Western culture. That's it. Western culture. So we're not doing the, the other two in between. I know that's controversial because In Praise of Learning has uh, proper Henry Cow compositions on it, but I just wanted to do Western culture, so that's what we're doing. Okay, this is the way it goes. So Western culture, see you. Have- <laughs>